Well, hello, Warriors. This is Director of Guidance, Ryan Van Campen. Today, we're excited to talk with our freshmen, uh, students, and families about their transition to Wabansi Valley High School. At the end of the summer, we gave you a little preview of what you could expect during your freshman year here at Wabansi Valley. And we hope that now that first quarter has ended and we're looking at the second half of our first semester, your student has begun to experience some success, both personally and academically. But we know that there's probably still some questions that you have as a freshman parent. And tonight we really want to cover some of those important concepts that will help our students and your student succeed here at Wabansi Valley. So here are some of the topics that we really want to reflect on and make sure that you have some of these frequently asked questions answered. So our reflection will include how the house team supports students achieve their personal, social, and academic goals. We'll look at the importance of freshman year and how that starts to have an impact on your GPA and transcripts for years going forward. We'll talk a little bit about final exams and how they might differ from some of the exams and assessments that you took during middle school. We'll look at the academic supports available to students here at Wabansi, both during the school day and outside of our school day hours. We'll look at the concept of social emotional learning and how our teachers are incorporating this into the classroom on a weekly basis. And we'll also look at our freshman advisory program and how that prepares students for life here at Wabansi Valley. Hello, my name is Mrs. Ratched and I'm a counselor in the Pride House. I'm going to kick off our presentation with explaining what the house system is. At Wabansi, we have four houses and within each house, there is support staff to help your student find success. Each house includes two counselors, one dean, one social worker, one school psychologist, and two secretaries. While our roles may vary, we work collaboratively to ensure that your child receives the support needed to find success in high school. School counselors work with students in growing within three main domains, academic development, career development, and social and emotional development. We provide academic advising, scheduling, post-secondary planning. We work with students regarding social and emotional concerns and we provide whole group guidance for student success. Deans work with students on items such as attendance, absences, discipline, parking, and safety and security concerns. Social workers assist with mental health concerns, behavioral concerns, positive behavioral support, academic and classroom support, individual and group counseling, and crisis intervention. School psychologists work closely with our special education department and 504 team. They complete evaluations and assessments, provide individual and group counseling, and also help with crisis intervention. Here you can see all the friendly faces that will greet your student in their house. Our houses are divided alphabetically by last name. If your student has not had the opportunity to visit his or her house, please do so soon. We would love to meet you. Hi, my name is Cindy Gustafson. I'm a counselor in the Pride House for students with last names A through CAL. And today I'll be talking to you about the importance of freshman year. If there's one thing that I hear over and over from seniors, it's that they wish that they had taken freshman year more seriously. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about important things to understand so your student can really build a great foundation in freshman year and moving forward throughout high school. So today we will talk about weighted versus unweighted grades, grading scale that we use here at Wabansi, how to read a student transcript and what's included on there, and how to calculate a grade point average. So grades are the letter equivalent to a point value given for an assignment, project, or assessment. And when you look down at our grading scale at the bottom, you'll notice it's probably not very different from what your student experienced in middle school. For those of you with um, older students who had attended Wabonzi and may remember that we had used pluses and minuses on the transcripts and report cards previously, that is no longer something that we use. So if a student earns an A at the end of the semester, that is a 90% or an A that is a 100%, it will still just say A on the transcript. So you can see that grading scale, 90 to 100 is an A, 80 to 89 B, 70 to 79 C, 60 to 69 D. A's, B's, C's, and D's do earn credits. 
If a student scores below a 60%, that is considered an F and no credit is earned for that class. We can see on the right side, the grade point value that is attached to each of those letter grades. An A is worth four, a B is three, a C is two, a D is one, and then as you see with that F, that is worth zero points. So what's the difference between weighted and unweighted grades? Well, grades that are earned in an honors class or an advanced placement or AP class are considered to be weighted grades. Because these classes are more rigorous, we assign them a higher point value. So for instance, if a freshman is enrolled in honors biology and earns an A for the semester, that student will receive five weighted grade points when we are calculating a weighted GPA for the student. If we are calculating an unweighted GPA where we are not considering that honors or AP coursework, then the student would be earning an four points for the unweighted A. Similarly, if a student is enrolled in regular biology, college prep biology, and gets an A, because that is not an honors or AP course, that A will be worth four points. That's the max value for that A. So what's included on a transcript? We'll see the year and the semester that the grades are from. On the far left-hand column, we'll see the, the classes that the student was enrolled in for the semester. So our student, John Doe, was enrolled in seven classes for his first semester of high school. We can see that he took one honors class, which is his geometry honors. The next column is the grades that the student earned. Because John did earn A's and B's and C's, no, all grades higher than an F, John did earn the maximum number of credits for the semester. So each class is worth 0.5 credits and John took seven classes. So he earned 3.5 credits for his first semester of high school. To give this some perspective, students do need 24 credits to graduate from Wabanzi. Finally, the last column shows the grade that the student was enrolled in when he took those classes. So where do we see the impact of that weighted course? So we calculate for a student, um, we can calculate a weighted GPA, but we can also calculate an unweighted GPA. When we print a student's transcript, we do default to the weighted GPA, but we also do have access to that unweighted GPA number as well. In John's case, because he took that honors geometry course, he is assigned five points instead of four points for the A that he earned. So to calculate the GPA, we assign the point value for each letter grade, we add up all those points, and then we divide that total point value by the number of classes taken. So for John's weighted GPA, the total points are 25 divided by the seven classes he took, and that gives us a 3.57 GPA. If we are purely calculating an unweighted, we're not taking into account that extra weighting, then that five points would become a four point, and that takes us down to 24 total for the semester, divided by seven, giving us a 3.42 GPA. But we can see that that weighted A did give John a 0.15 boost in his GPA. Now, sometimes students hear this and they think, oh gosh, I should take all the honors and AP classes that I can. I appreciate the sentiment, but we always wanna make sure that students are taking appropriately challenging classes. So we want classes where students feel that they are being challenged, but they don't feel that they are underwater. So that does not necessarily mean we have to take all honors and AP. Um, again, each student is different, so we wanna see what's gonna be the best fit for them. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation tonight, and I hope you have a great evening. Something new for our freshmen, having never taken one previously, are final exams. Final exams are the culmination of their course's semester content. Typically, final exams are cumulative in nature, covering all of the content that was taught during the course of the entire semester. Sometimes, in rare instances, the final exam is the last test of the semester, just covering the unit that was just being taught. Most of the time, students will see items from previous tests on the final exam, testing their content knowledge from the start of the semester through the end of that semester. Final exams are important. Sometimes these exams could count for up to 20% of a student's final grade, making them extremely important in either keeping a current grade or pushing a student up or down a letter grade for that final grade. 
It is encouraged that students keep all of their notes and study materials from previous units as this will help them in studying for final exams. On this slide, you can see a copy of a previous final exam schedule. While the final exam schedule for this semester has not yet been released, you can count on it being similar in nature in that there will be three periods worth of exams scheduled on the first and second days with the final two class periods and a makeup period scheduled on the third day. Students do not need to be in attendance for the class period that their lunch is scheduled. If a student has a study hall or option period, they do not need to be in attendance for that period either. Students should anticipate there being some sort of final exam in every curricular class they are taking. It is strongly discouraged to miss any final exam unless there are extenuating circumstances. Hello parents. I will be discussing some of the academic resources that are available at Wabonzi Valley High School for your freshman student. One of the biggest resources that we encourage students to use is the Academic Resource Center, which is located in the ARC Hub. This resource center is available during students' lunch periods. We also have a testing center, which is located in the ARC Hub. Our ASAP is our after-school tutoring program. And we also encourage students to utilize teacher appointments or counselor meetings. The Academic Resource Center, which we call ARC, has teachers that are available to help in the core subjects such as English, Math, Science, Social Studies, and Word and Language. These, these teachers are available during students' lunch periods, and we encourage students to use half of their lunch periods to visit the ARC and get additional assistance when necessary. Students are able to go to the student splash page and look at which teachers are available during their lunch period. Another area we encourage students to utilize is the classroom reassessment policy. Each student can ask their teacher or check out the Google Classroom or use their syllabus to see what is the classroom reassessment policy for each class. Some classes will allow students to utilize the testing center, which is located in the Art Hub, or students may work directly with their teacher to find out what are the options for reassessment for that particular class. Another program which we have, which we encourage students to use for academic assistance is the after school program. This program is, is available on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 2.45 to 3.45. We encourage students to go to get additional assistance in those core classes when they might need academic help. There are teachers from each core area available to assist students during this time. Two other areas we encourage students to use is making appointments with their teacher or their counselor. Teachers are available before or after school or at various times during the school day based on their availability. I encourage students to contact their teacher directly via email or ask them before or after class if they would be available for a time that they can meet for additional assistance. Also, counselors are available for appointments for students that need a little academic help or just academic help with planning how to prioritize different things for classes. SEL Tuesdays. What is SEL? SEL stands for Social and Emotional Learning. CASEL is an organization that has put together a set of standards and a framework for how we can teach social and emotional learning skills within a school environment. The state of Illinois has adopted a set of standards based off this framework, and we are implementing that here at Wabonzi Valley High School. Social emotional learning covers the following topics, understanding and managing emotions, setting and achieving positive goals for oneself, understanding how to feel and show empathy for others, how to establish and maintain positive relationships, and how to make responsible decisions. Daniel Goleman is the author of Emotional Intelligence, and he has stated among his research, as much as 80% of adult success comes from emotional quotient, which is another name for social emotional learning. Scale Tuesdays, classroom lessons. Select Tuesdays throughout the month, SEL lessons are provided during second period here at Bonzi Valley. We use a modified bell schedule so that students are attending uh, their academic content areas 
as well as getting the SEL lesson um, as a supplement to help support students and their needs, especially coming off of a year of COVID uh, learning. The lessons were created by an SEL committee, which is a group of teachers, administrators, student services members, and various other staff members who collaborate on research-based lesson creation and problem-solve SEL interventions for both students and staff to take care of the social and emotional well-being of everybody inside of the building. This is a sample of a lesson that was provided at the beginning of the year to students that was focused on creating a positive class environment as well as a school climate that is positive. You can see in this lesson that students were prompted to discuss how they can create school connectedness amongst themselves and um, amongst each other within a school building so that we can create a positive environment for students to learn in. This is a sample lesson from the month of October, um, which was focusing on strategies for how to communicate successfully. Students spent time going through different tips and tricks on how to draft an email to their teachers, as well as just communicating in general so that they can be more productive and learn how to advocate for themselves within the school environment. Another great resource here at Wabansi Valley is our Freshman Advisory Program. And in fact, our Freshman Advisory Program is one of the things that really helps Wabansi Valley stick out amongst other schools in the area. This is a program that takes place during the first 20 minutes of your student's lunch period, where instead of going directly to the cafeteria, they go to a classroom with a teacher and a small group of students also uh, rotating in are some of our upperclassmen, link crew leaders, and our counselors, social workers, and deans. Together, this group of leaders works with our freshmen to really to answer their questions about life at Wabansi and help them as we transition throughout the school calendar be prepared for what's coming up. So what exactly does freshman advisory cover? Well, as I just mentioned, advisory really um, takes a look at the school year and says, what do our students need to know and how do we get them that information before they really need to know that? So at the start of the year, we do an introduction to Wabansi Valley history and school culture. We talk about uh, our school's rich history there. We talk about how to get involved in activities. We talk about homecoming before homecoming week. We really look at our uh, Veterans Day assembly and how we prepare students for that. At the start of the year, we also have a discussion about extracurricular opportunities, whether that's joining a club, an activity, or a sport. And we actually have a day in advisory where we have all of our clubs and activities set up in our atrium. Students come down and they can meet with the different club sponsors and upperclassmen who are in those clubs and sports. A lot of the times our students will sign up right there. But then we continue to have ongoing discussions about how do you find balance between your personal life, your academic life, and that extracurricular involvement. How do you balance those things with concepts like time management and executive functioning? That leads into great discussions on self-advocacy, where we help have our upperclassmen leaders share information about how they found success as a freshman and beyond. We actually have students practice writing letters to their teachers, writing emails, and knowing how to use the various communication systems here at Wabansi Valley. Then towards the end of first semester, we have a time of course planning and course exploration where our counselors will come in and talk about the course selection process that begins in January. But we do our due diligence to make sure that students have a plan even before they can start selecting their classes. And we'll introduce them to the concept of a four-year plan where they loosely chart out what classes they want to take while here at Wabansi Valley. While we don't need students to commit to their classes right then when we do the four-year plan, it's important for them to see some of our capstone classes that have prerequisites and they need to know what electives they should be taking as a sophomore and junior if they want to get to that capstone experience during their senior year. Our counselors also come in to talk about post-secondary plans where we look at our schooling system and begin looking at colleges or careers that the students might want to prepare for after they leave Wabansi Valley. Another key component of freshman advisory is really looking at academic success and what interventions our students can take advantage of here at Wabansi Valley. 
During the month of November, we've actually hit a, a strong push on this academic success and have given students some time in advisory to have a guided study hall where they can seek out um, specific help from teachers or visit our ARC. We hope that this is something our students start seeing during freshman advisory and continue on during second semester and even sophomore, junior, and senior year when they no longer have advisory. That's just a little bit of an overview of what our freshman advisory curriculum covers during first semester. Well, we hope that this has given you some greater insight into what you can expect during freshman year here at Wabansi Valley, and maybe has answered some of those lingering questions that you've had through first quarter of your student's year. I wanna encourage you, make sure that you reach out to your student school counselor or another house team member we are here to help you and make sure that you have a smooth transition to Wabansi Valley and really have a freshman year that sets you up for success as an upperclassman and beyond. Go Warriors!